Yes, yes. Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome to Monday night. Um, <clears throat> all right. Before we get uh, started here with Brett, and I see Brett's ready to rock and roll, uh, kind of give some people some time to catch up because we're, you know, it takes we're up to 19 people now. Many more. Uh, so, Williamsburg, uh, Sue, you're now selling. Yeah, that's what you want to be. All right. Nice, nice. Okay. So, all right. Let's, a uh, couple of things going on. Uh, we've got, um, Sue's got a great deal that she's working on a lot. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, uh, actually it's going to uh, be right up Brett's, Brett's alley. Uh, when, uh, we talk about what goes on, uh, this is Melody Middendorf sneaking in, uh, geez. Uh, this is Daniel Jashima. I see you, buddy. Uh, thank you for the callback. I appreciate it. And uh, I can tell you're new because, uh, those, those, uh, are automated phone calls. Uh, so you don't have to call me back for those calls, you know, but whenever you need me, just give me a buzz. Um, and then also let me see. So Mike Gilbert's Mike Gilbert's got an accepted LOI. Woo -woo. All right. So yeah, we're going to work on that and, uh, and see what that's all about. Um, patience. I, uh, boy, that woman lives up to her name. Uh, and she, um, I've got to talk to her on Monday. Some of you guys call me up. Uh, Mondays are always tough. Uh, so, uh, like Frank, I gotta, I gotta talk to Frank uh, tomorrow morning. So, um, let's, uh, let's get that rock and roll. Okay. So listen, I get some uh, really cool, uh, people to talk to on my podcast and, uh, uh, I, I, you know, they just crawl out of the woodwork. I don't even know where they come from. I mean, that's, I have actually have a professional, uh, booking agent who books people and, uh, he got me connected with this guy, Brett Swartz, as you can see here on the screen. And uh, Brett has a very cool program um, that uh, we're going to learn about today. I think it's very important that everybody understands this because, you know, everybody knows about 1031s. 1031s appear in purchase and sale uh, agreements. Like it's, you know, we all have to bow down and, and, uh, and uh, say it's hallowed ground for these, um, for these 1031s. But then you've got that situation. Hey, Lamb, there's someone behind you. Just want to let you know. Look, there's somebody behind you. Look at Lamb is the only guy I know that's actually got a picture of himself behind, the, behind him, you know? No, and I'm not talking about your date. Um, all right, so uh, Brett's got this, uh, you know, the, the issue with 1031s makes a ton of sense, and Sumac is actually dealing with this matter uh, as we speak with the seller that she is uh, trying to buy this property from. The guy's in his 70s. He wants out. He doesn't want to go do a 1031 exchange and flip it over to uh, another property. He's done with owning properties. Listen, I hope this happens to everybody on this call at some time in their life. But as before I spoke to Brett, the solution was either you pay the taxes or you do a 1031 exchange. But here I'm going to unmute Mr. Swartz. So listen, I am, um, you know, as Brett uh, knows, guys, we have one hour. You're going to ask Brett any question um, uh, my wife is from Kalamazoo. Uh, we, as we're going to be uh, peppering you with questions, uh, but we definitely, uh, everyone on this call needs to understand how you operate. Now, the way, unbeknownst to you, my lead up to everybody was, um, you know, it's a, it's a, a DST. And uh, everybody always knows the Delaware uh, Sales Trust, but the, uh, um, but we, you know, you, that is not what you espouse, espouse. So, uh, so I'm going to turn it over to you. You have the stage. Uh, when you want to, when you want to put up your PowerPoint, uh, let me know. I'll give you the ball. Just do it now. We'll get started. We'll go through it. We'll jam this. Perfect. Let me do that right now. Uh, let me see. Let me manage participants. Brett Swartz more. I'm going to make you the host. You are in control now. Excellent. All yours. There you go. Thank you so much for having me, Charles. Yeah. I appreciate it and looking forward to, uh, to helping you guys out in any, any way I can. So I'm going to present a strategy to you. It's called a deferred sales trust. Let me see. Are you, am I, my screen, is it sharing right now? Or do I need to Not click? yet. Nope. Nope. So what you do is go down to the bottom. I see. You, okay, you see there you go. Now you're good. Now you're good. All right. All right. So I'm Brett Swartz. I'm out of Sacramento, California. And let's face it, most commercial real estate owners – investors they struggle with capital gains tax either when they try to buy something like maybe a lot of you are today or when they go to sell something okay so we're going to talk about how to become a better or become a capital gains tax deferral leader 
My goal is to empower you with this strategy, just like you know the 1031 exchange or the Delaware Statutory Trust. I want you to know the Deferred Sales Trust so that you can use the tool to win more deals, separate yourself from any other buyers that are out there, and have a backup plan in case you ever sell and want to invest uh, into a deal like a, a Charlie's, one of Charlie's deals. Um, Charlie, can I call you Charlie or Charles? What do you like better? Uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, you, uh, I don't <laughs> Dr. Know, Dobbins? Uh, Re Re yeah, Reverend Dr. Dobbins. Most Reverend Dr. Dobbins. So, <laughs> no, just call me Charlie. Just call me Charlie. Okay, Charlie. All right, so pay off debt, defer and diversify your equity to preserve wealth, invest at optimal timing to create wealth. Okay, so most luxury homeowners, business owners, or commercial real estate owners, they struggle with capital gains tax when they go to sell their highly appreciated assets. We use a deferred sales trust to give them tax deferral, liquidity, diversification. And the biggest one is freedom to buy commercial real estate if they want to at optimal timing, or maybe never again for that 70 year old guy who just is done with all of it, um, but feels trapped by capital gains tax. And so that they can create and preserve more wealth and so that you can win more deals. Okay. Okay. Hold on. Hold on one second there, Brett. You, you talked about two things there that I want to stress. First off, it's a highly appreciated asset, meaning the guy's got a lot of equity in this property. He's held it for a while and he's going to have a big tax implication. And then the other thing that you mentioned was the timing element involved where they wait for the optimal timing. See, with a 1031, you've got to go by the IRS's tax uh, timelines, and that may not be beneficial depending upon what the market's doing. So what are the best alternatives to those two situations? Go ahead. Exactly. We're going to dive right into that in a couple slides, actually. So, but first of all, who are we? Oh, Capital Gains Tax Solutions is one of um, 13 exclusive trustees across the U.S. We're a part of a bigger group called the Estate Planning Team. Who's the estate planning team? Well, it's a membership group of legal and financial service professionals, and they're dedicated to helping their clients preserve their wealth through tax deferral and also protect their estate. So we have CPAs, tax attorneys, trustees, real estate professionals, real uh, commercial and residential, escrow officers, financial planners, 1031 QI companies, business brokers. There's thousands of, of uh, members that are all in their individual space that, that are our preferred vendors or strategic partners across the U.S. I'm the star in Northern California, by the way. <laughs> Who's the star in Worcester, Mass? I'd like to know. I don't think there are any stars in Worcester, Mass. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's different trustees across the U.S. Um, um, the, so what are we going to cover? What are the capital gains tax deferral options? And how does the deferred sales trust work? Okay. Uh, how to eliminate the need for a 1031 exchange, how to sell high and buy low and invest in commercial real estate syndications or your own deal at your own timing. We call that optimal timing with a new depreciation schedule. No, no restrictions on timing and also a brand new depreciation schedule. And I put here, win more listings by differentiating yourself. I know for you guys, you guys are probably not brokers. You're probably, you know, buyers, syndicators trying to put deals together. So in this scenario, it'd be win more deals by differentiating yourself from every other buyer out there who's calling and pitching, hey, sell me your property, but they're really not providing that solution, right? They hear the same thing over and over and over again. Just do a 1031 or maybe do a seller carry back, a traditional seller carry back, maybe do a Delaware. But for a lot of reasons, those don't work for a lot of people, okay? So here's the perfect storm facing, um, I say real estate agents, but even buyers like yourself, okay? Um, it has to do with the baby boomer population. So the demographics are such that according to the American Bakers Association, about $17 trillion will pass from one generation to the next in the next 20 years. And this is the largest wealth transfer in the history of the planet that we know of. And it's happening right now. In fact, in the U.S. alone, there's about 77 million baby boomers. And every single day, about 10,000 of them turn 65. So a massive amount of wealth that's transferring. Okay, what is that wealth in, by the way? That wealth is tied to high-end commercial real estate, high-end uh, residential primary homes, and private equity and or businesses, okay? And what's facing them? Well, there's taxation and current market conditions are adding to this perfect storm. Interest rates are hovering near 40-year lows, which is also propping up some value for real estate. 
but also real estate has appreciated a, a, a great deal over the years. You know, they've owned it for 10, 20, 30 years. Those are the perfect people to be buying from because they're highly appreciated and they probably have some more pricing flexibility than most. And also typically the, the value hasn't been added and they've got a little bit uh, stagnant in, in actually raising the rents, turning the units. Um, also the 1031 timelines are very restrictive. They don't want to necessarily go into a brand new deal and start over with new toilets, new trash, new liability. And the last thing is low inventory. There's just a lot of low inventory and high prices out there. I mean, there's, there's inventory, but very, very high prices, very low cap rates, not a lot of value add forced appreciation opportunities. So what are they faced with? Well, they're faced with somewhere between 33 and 50% of their gains being wiped out by capital gains tax and depreciation recapture. So they're very reluctant to sell. They're just like, you know what? I don't really want to sell because I don't want to just get wiped out with all of the gain that I've made over all of these years. So every single day, actually those who actually do sell, every single day high net worth primary homeowners, business owners, or commercial real estate owners, they pay hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars in capital gains tax when they don't have to. And they feel really trapped and they want a solution. They do, they really want a solution. So again, I say do your clients, but really this is towards um, um, do the people you're trying to buy from, do they struggle with these capital gains tax scenarios? They're selling their multifamily property. They're selling their commercial real estate, their business, their primary home, and they want to defer capital gains tax instead of paying it to Uncle Sam. Do they want to trade their apartment building, their toilets, trash, liability from their retail center um, for, for time, travel, liquidity, diversification, retirement, and being debt free from all of their obligations? And again, it's the high capital gains tax. I put around 37%. It depends on what state you know, you're in, right? And what, what, what the uh, state federal tax is, or what the federal, state, and then Obamacare. But usually about 37%. Uh, that's what it is for California. Um, and then you add an additional depreciation recapture. And the last thing is the restrictive 1031 laws, right? 45 days to identify, 180 days to close. That holding them back from selling their property to you. So this is a sample case, okay? So John and Jill Smith, they bought a property for $5 million. And well, that's their adjusted cost basis, okay? They're selling it for 20 million. They have a $15 million gain. Well, they're gonna be taxed if you live in California, somewhere around 37%. Okay, that's federal of 20, state 13.3, um, Obamacare 3.8%. Taxes that are due about 5.5 million. So we say, why pay the capital gains tax when you can defer it? We define losing as paying the tax. We define deferral as winning because you can live off the interest and create more wealth. The same reason you do a 1031 exchange. This is a live deal. This is a deal that just closed a couple weeks ago, okay? This gentleman named Peter Nielsen. He's a client of mine. He's out of Marin, California. He's actually a multifamily investor for all his life. But he was, he's, he's turning 70 years old. He's, 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 he's just older now, right? And he's just tired of owning the real estate He's actually a real estate broker too by trade, mostly residential. But he had a $500,000 cost basis. He was driving up to Sacramento and this Sacramento property he sold for about $1.8 million. He was, you know, the, all the toilets, trash liability, knocking on doors to collect rents. He was just tired of it all. In fact, this location was one of the tougher locations in Sacramento. Um, and uh, he had, I think he had a, he got a gunshot in his car. I mean, just stuff where he's just going, I'm just too old for this. I'm just tired of this. And so of course you can hire property management, but that eats up a lot of the profit, right? Um, especially for this deal size. So anyways, he sold for about 1.8. He had about a $1.3 million gain. He was looking at somewhere around $510,000. And this is his quote for me. He goes, Brett, I don't want to trade 18 units or 18 problems for 36 problems. I don't want to do a 1031 exchange. I actually want liquidity. I want diversification. I want to pay off all my debt. So he paid off his debt and he netted 1.3 into the deferred sales trust. This is a live deal right now out of um, Georgia, out of Atlanta, Georgia. They have a $3 million cost basis. They're selling this property for 7.3 million, about a $4.3 million gain, about 40% tax with a depreciation recapture. And uh, we're going to help them defer 1.7 million in tax. Okay. So what are the options? First options, don't sell. And a lot of times when you're calling these folks to try to win their property, they're just like, I'm not gonna sell. I'm not gonna sell because I don't wanna pay the tax. That's the most, probably the most common one. 
The second one, of course, is the 1031 exchange, which you know about with the Delaware Statutory Trust or a TIC. And this can be a good option for folks, you know? Um, I, I, I've done these, I've done Delawares, I've done lots of 1031 exchanges. I'm a real estate broker by trade. I started at Marcus and Millichap, and I still help people do 1031 exchanges. So I have nothing against these other options. I just think they each have their time and their place. And right okay. now, it's just tough to find a deal um, that's, that, that makes a lot of sense. Now, if you have enough time and you have enough people turning over rocks, you can always find a deal. But for the average guy who's you know, older, he doesn't have the time or the energy to really turn over these rocks. And so a lot of times they just don't wanna do the 1031 exchange. The second thing, of course, is we call the candle burning at both ends. You sell high today, you're likely buying 180 days even higher. So that timing period is not good. Our parents told us to sell high and buy low, not sell high and buy higher 180 days later. And you couple that if interest rates are rising, that it decreases your return, right? Because you're having to borrow more to actually buy. So the 1031 has its challenges, but it's still a good strategy if you can find a deal. Option hey, three, hey Brett, yeah. Brett, hold on. First off, uh, my father never told me that. Secondly is, uh, um, can you go through the definition of uh, de uh, the Delaware Statutory Trust? Yeah, Delaware Statutory Trust, it's kind of like a mutual fund of property. It's just a, it's a subcategory of the 1031 exchange, meaning you can 1031 into a deal where you're not the, you're kind of the silent, silent partner, okay? You're just putting it into a, someone else who's the sponsor. The positives are non-recourse debt, it's on the sponsor. Typically it's investment grade property, class A, great locations, large property. So you're diversifying out of, the, out of your debt and you're diversifying to multiple properties, but it's generally somewhere between one and five properties and one to three locations. Um, so they're, they're, they're good, but you're giving up control. They're typically 10 year holds and typically very high fees. Um, and also somewhere around 5% return and it's non-liquid meaning you can't get in and out. It's just, you're, you're basically just saying goodbye. You guys do it all. I'll just receive a check. And again, they have their place. And that also may work for some of the people you're calling. I don't want to say that they, they wouldn't. It's, they have their place, but they also can only be purchased through a financial advisor. These are, these are um, restricted type of investments um, that are, um, you need to be accredited as well. Okay, that's another thing. People have to be accredited to do that. Does that answer the question, Charlie? You good there? Yes, yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Option three is the deferred sales trust. Oh yeah, by the way, the 1031 exchange only works for investment property, right? It does not work for a primary home. It does not work for a business. It does not work for artwork or collectibles or a car. It's only investment like kind real estate into like kind investment real estate. Option three is the deferred sales trust. It works for everything. Highly appreciated stock, high end primary home, the sale of a business, commercial real estate, you name it, we've done it. Option number four, sell and pay the tax. Most people don't want to do that. There's also charitable remainder trust, but most people aren't, aren't that charitable. They're charitable to an extent, but not hundred percent. Um, so 1031 exchange, again, you have the timing deadlines, not good, not good, tough to find a deal, don't want to overpay per property. You also have to rem remain in debt, right? So if you have a $10 million deal and $5 million in debt, you need to buy at least a $10 million or greater, but also you're going to remain in debt there, right? A lot of these owners you're buying from, they actually want to get out of the debt. They, 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 they've, they've been through 2008 and they don't want to experience that ever again. But again, they don't know how to get out without paying the tax and being able to get debt free. The deferred sales trust solves that. We get out of all the debt at closing. Uh, the next one is the depreciation schedule travels. So when you're calling these long-term owners and they've owned it for 30 years, they probably fully depreciated out of the 27 and a half years for the, for the multifamily property. Meaning they're not able to offset the income that's coming in right now. So depreciation is one of, if not the number one reason to own investment real estate because again, it offsets the rental income that's coming in and it's as if you're not taxed. Now, when you sell, it's called depreciation recapture, right? That's how we can get up to that 50% mark because beyond the state and federal um, uh, capital gains tax, uh, that's how we, we move up higher and higher and higher is that depreciation recapture. So that's not good. If they do a 1031 exchange, that schedule is traveling to the next property, which means they have to buy a much bigger property to get any more depreciation. So that's not good. And that's the sell high, buy higher. Um, Charlie, I'm sorry your parents didn't teach you that, but maybe <laughs> they'll teach your kids that, all right? Yeah. Well, my kids know, believe me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I believe it. I believe it. Um, so the 1031 is not friendly to our parents' advice, okay? 
So imagine trading in and out of real estate in a whole new way. Imagine it's, oh, 2006 all over again, right? And the market is, is just so hot. Prices are so high. You made a bunch of money and you can sell and you can sit on the sidelines all tax deferred in a vehicle which gives you liquidity, diversification, and the ability to invest whenever you want in commercial real estate. Also, by the way, you're out of your debt. And this is what the Deferred Sales Trust does. We say goodbye to the old way of trading in and out of real estate and not being able to sell because of the 1031 exchange in order to save from paying the capital gains tax. Say goodbye to having to overpay when buying for a property or just having leverage. If the seller just tells you go pound sand because the, uh, he doesn't want to give you any, any kind of uh, deferred maintenance uh, credit, you can say, well, I have a backup plan. I, I know I'm in a 1031, but I also have a backup plan. That's what the Deferred Sales Trust is. It's a backup plan for a failed 1031. We like to say we eliminate the need for the 1031. Still use it, but we eliminate the need by giving you a backup plan or at close of escrow, we can, we can close the Deferred Sales Trust. Next thing is invest commercial real estate anytime. Sell high and diversify, meaning you can go into Charlie's deals for a portion of your wealth. You can go into other commercial real estate syndications. You can go into your own deal. You can do a mixture of all of those. And the big one is the new depreciation schedule. Once you go into this deal by, by directing the funds to a new LLC to purchase real estate with your trust, it's a brand new depreciation schedule, which, oh, by the way, you're the managing member of that LLC. You're partnering with your trust, which is huge versus the 1031. Okay, so if you're gonna invest your money that you've worked hard for and that you've added value on properties, you deserve a solution which will give you freedom, flexibility to when, where, and how your funds are invested. And that might be the thing I would tell the owner you're calling who's 70 years old to say, look, you deserve a solution that's gonna give you flexibility. It's gonna give you freedom to time the market. Maybe never go back into real estate. Um, to be able to access the cash and pay the tax and live off of that if you want to. So overview of the Deferred Sales Trust. First of all, it defers this, if you haven't caught on already, it defers taxes on the sale of a primary home, commercial real estate, business, and it's a 1031 exchange alternative or rescue. But unlike a 1031 exchange, the funds don't have to be put into like kind real estate in a short period of time. Instead, it can be put into stocks, bonds, mutual funds of the, of the client's choosing, and all the debt is paid off at closing. Second, it provides liquidity and diversification. Okay, so hold, on, hold on, Brett. Brett, I, I just want to stress that last point. Uh, 1031 exchange has to be a like-kind transfer with a deferred sales trust. It can go into stocks and bonds. It can give the, the old owner a lot more opportunities to do with his money. So that is, that is huge, absolutely huge. Yes, and then go back into real estate or partner with a deal that Charlie's putting together, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so you're not only diversifying into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, which by the way, I'm a commercial real estate owner myself. I'm in the business, it's in my blood and my family. I, I'm not a big stock market guy, right? I'm like 80, 20, 80% in investment real estate, 20% in the stock market, okay? However, how, do you, how are these owners diversifying their 80%? And that's where most of these people are calling you, right? If you first thing you say, hey, put it in the stock market, they're gonna say, look, I made all my wealth in the stock market. Be prepared for that objection, and it's a good objection. You say, no, no, don't worry about that. You can put it into multiple syndications. So let's imagine it was a, a million dollar deal up to 80% of the funds can be directed into multiple syndications and they could put $100,000 in eight different real estate opportunities. They could put it into their own deal if they wanted to. So it's not just diversifying into stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, that is an option, but it's also diversifying from them having to do the work themselves. Most 1031, the entities must move to the next entity. In other words, the entity must stay intact. So they end up having to do it themselves, okay? So that's an that's a important, important point as well. Okay, so liquidity and diversification. Let's just imagine they, they, they have all the funds, a million dollars sitting in the trust. At any point, if it's in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds, they can make a call and say, cash me out of $100,000. Within four days, they have their money. Now, they're going to pay the tax on that 100000 but at least they have the ability to be liquid and go enjoy their wealth rather than having to refinance or sell a property. All right, so let me just stress here the mechanics of this. Um, what you're doing is the, the money is, is transferred from the sale of the property into this trust. 
that the person cannot touch. Once they touch it, it becomes taxable. Just like uh, if not using a qualified intermediary on a, on a 1031 exchange. That once, once you touch that money, the, the IRS says you own it, we're gonna tax it. So on a deferred sales trust, this money comes to the to this, uh, seller through a third party or the third party uh, uh, manages it for them and then they can decide what they want to do with it at any time. Correct. And okay. they live off the interest payments. Most of our clients live off the interest payments. They're 10 year notes, Charlie. At the end of 10 years, they re renew for another 10 years and renew for another 10 years and they can pass it on to their kids and keep renewing on it. Okay. And they just pay ordinary income on the interest payments. All right. So they can go as long as they want to. They're not tied to the, the buyer who bought the deal. They're not tied to the old property. The other one is it can sever partnership interest, okay? So imagine all, all of us on this call owned a thousand units, five different properties. When we sell, half of us could do the deferred sales trust, the other half cannot. So if you're calling somebody who's in a partnership deal, he's with his brother or sister or whoever, and one of them wants to sell and the other one doesn't want to sell, one of them doesn't mind paying the tax, the other one can't stand paying the tax. That is very common with partnerships, okay? And if you don't sell, and by the way, they have to do a 1031 exchange. The entity must stay intact. So they're just, they're at a crossroads where they're just going, I'm not going to do anything. And they just keep wow. fighting over it. You come in with a very, very elegant solution saying like, hey, no problem. You can pay your own tax, go your own way. And I can do a deferred sales trust. It can sever the partnership interest or they can both do a deferred sales trust that's completely separate from one another with separate financial advisors. The funds are never co-mingled with other, other funds. They're all in their own separate individual accounts. They can hire their own financial advisor. They can use one of our strategic partners across the U.S., okay? So it's very, very um, flexible, okay? And now, Bill, Bill, Bill Dylan Baca says, you know, and this is, I know the answer to this one, it's if they cash out that $100,000 in another tax year, uh, it could potentially be at a lower tax bracket if their income is lower. Uh, you know, you pay at the tax bracket you're in when you realize that, that money. A hundred percent. Great point, Charlie, right? Imagine selling that million dollar property today and receiving all that million dollars in this one given year, right? That's going to put your tax bracket through the roof. Why don't you spread that out over time and pay a hundred thousand over the next 10 years to slowly bleed out the trust. And that's what some of our clients will do. They'll slowly bleed out the trust and pay small incremental amounts. Or the other scenario is this, the person you're buying from is 55 years old and they're retiring in five years. Okay. And so the same thing, they're working, they have all this income from their working, working life and they have this big appreciation here. They can sell and they can actually put the money into the trust and let the funds just compound. They don't have to actually take any interest payments. Then when they retire in five years and their income goes to zero on their working side, they can start to live off the trust. So it becomes sort of like a, it is a retirement plan at a lower tax bracket. Even better, they moved to Nevada or they moved to Florida or they moved to a really tax-friendly state. I actually have a client doing that right now. We're selling a, he's selling a $14 million home in Palo Alto. He was the number one Carla William real estate agent multiple years in a row. He sells high-end luxury homes. He's living in his own home. He built it for $6 million. The primary home, remember, doesn't qualify for a 1031. He has that 250 exclusion but he's gonna owe 2 million above and beyond his exclusion. So he's gonna pay off all his debt and he's gonna put 6 million into the deferred sales trust instead of 4 million. And then he's gonna to move to Nevada, establish residency, and then start receiving the income. So he's gonna save even more. So it's very, very tax efficient. So hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, you know, just something else you probably don't even think of that, you know, my father's uh, insurance business, uh, Medicare uh, agency, when you turn 65 and you pick up your Part B Met, uh, Medicare, it's $135.50 a month. Unless you earned over you know, uh, $80,000 a year two years before. So I have a lot of people that come to the agency, they, they sold the property uh, back in 63 while they're planning to you know, get into retirement. They have this huge gain two years before, and then all of a sudden they find out that it's not $135.50 for the Part B, it's $375, and it's a continued look back. But if we're deferring that in a, in a DST, then they don't have to worry about it. There's another thing that, that, you know, that uh, they're gonna get whacked on by the government if, they, if it's like a success tax. And uh, geez, wow, that's, I like this. I, I like this, Brett. Yeah, the more you dig into it, Charlie, I think the more you're gonna like it. Yeah. The, the last one we'll talk about before we actually talk about how it works is the exit on the taxable estate, 
Okay, so you, you may have a gentleman who's worth a lot of money. Let's just say he's worth $52 million, okay? And he has a nice property that he actually wants to sell, but the same scenario, he's older, doesn't want to do another 1031 exchange. When he sells, he can move it outside the taxable estate with the deferred sales trust. So if he's worth 22, uh, anything above 22 million is, is taxed at 40%. So let's just take $52 million minus 22 million. That's $30 million still inside of his taxable estate. That's not exempt. If he passes away and his estate passes, this kid's gonna pay 40% on that 30 million. Instead, he can sell today to you, let's say it's a $5 million deal, and move it outside of his taxable estate, defer the tax, defer the depreciation recapture, and move it <clears throat> outside the taxable estate. Nothing else we know of can do this. Wow. This is the one thing that's so unique to the deferred sales trust, okay? Very powerful there, okay? So 11 million if you're single, 22 million if you're married. All right, so this is a recent example, and then we're gonna talk about how this thing all works, okay? So a recent example, we just helped a couple. We're getting a divorce in Newport Beach, sell a $26 million home. Okay, they needed to sell. They owed $6 million above and beyond their exclusion. And instead of paying that, and they're not eligible for a 1031, they put it all into the deferred sales trust. So they're living off the interest for as long as they want. It's in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And they probably gonna invest back into real estate at optimal timing, which is their own timing, which could be tomorrow, could be a couple years from now, could be five